All right, you guys, today we're going to look at 4-3. Uh, I know this is slightly out of order, but considering we just worked on that uh, factoring worksheet, it kind of makes the most sense to start Chapter 4 in Section 4-3. Um, so today we're going to look at solving quadratic equations by factoring, which is exactly what you're doing on that worksheet again. Um, the big idea today is we're looking to get our expressions in factored form, okay? Um, with that, you know, being said, we're basically taking equations that are listed in standard form here, and we're eventually going to factored form. So we're trying to work from standard into factored form. Um, how this helps us solve our quadratic equation. Well, if you take a peek at the graph over here, related graph two and six are the x-intercepts. If you notice, we have these intercepts at two and six. Those are the solutions to the equation, okay? So with that being said, our roots are x-intercepts and our solutions to quadratic equations are all interrelated. Um, factors as well are also related, but notice since our factors are two and six, or two and six, or our solutions are two and six, our factors are always gonna be in the form x minus p and x minus q, as stated in our factored form below, all right? So we're just gonna dive right into things. Uh, again, standard form is your uh, expression where you have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's our standard form. If you don't have that down, I would get it written down. Um, and how we work from factored into standard form is this method of foiling, which you guys have done in the past. So we multiply everything through and then we get from our factored form which is here to our standard form, which is here. So kind of the first thing we're gonna take a look at is um, translating our sentence into an expression. So it says write the quadratic equation whose standard form roots are negative three and seven. So as we take a peek at this, we understand our equation can be written as uh, x minus p and x minus q, where these, our factors p and q. So when I plug in my equation, x minus a negative three is gonna be x plus three, x minus seven. And then from this point, we can expand it into a quadratic equation. So we multiply our first, which are x squareds, our insides and our outsides. If you have trouble seeing that, I do the eyebrows, eyebrows, nose, mouth, or first, outside, inside, last. Our insides are 3x, our outsides are negative 7x, which combine into a negative 4x. Positive 3 times negative 7 is negative 24. So my quadratic equation is y equals x squared minus 4x minus 21. All right. Whenever we see something like this, four terms, you're going to want to group. All right. And typically, grouping is set up. Just like we did on the worksheet, we're gonna group our first two and our last two. So we create two smaller factoring problems, essentially. And we ask ourselves, what's common in the first group? Well, it looks like 12C is common in my first group. If I take out 12C, I'm left with 4G plus three. In my second group, trying to think about what's common, it looks like a negative D is common. And then I'm left with, again, 4G plus 3. Should grouping be an effective method that works, what you're left with should be the exact same. All right? So then what I can do is I can factor that out again. And I have 4G plus 3. And then if you notice, you have 12C minus D left. Okay? Those of you that worked through that factoring worksheet, this process of grouping should be very familiar to you, all right? Continuing on, why is this process important? Well, if we can get uh, our expression factored and we have a product of two numbers, all right? And again, we're looking for those x-intercepts where essentially y is zero. If I can get my expression into two factors and 
set my equation equal to zero, I should be able to solve. All right, and that's what the zero product property says, is if I have a product of two numbers equals zero, then I can set the factors equal to zero to solve that equation. All right, so we're gonna use that idea to solve. So taking a peek at this first one, uh, we are going to factor to solve, all right? So I see two terms in this case. I'm gonna look for what's common in each of these. Well, it looks like 5x is common, and then I'm left with a 4x minus three. Again, whenever we're solving a quadratic equation, we wanna make sure it does equal zero. And then at this point, after you factored, you can set each portion equal to zero and solve. And some of you will likely be able to do this in your head. You won't need to solve. But when I divide both sides by five, I'm going to get x equals zero in this case. When I add three and divide by four, I'm going to get x equals three fourths. All right. Moving on to the next problem, looking for that um, factoring expression. I see two terms. I see that there's nothing in common that can be taken out of both of them, but I do notice each of those are perfect squares. If you don't remember this factoring pattern, I would encourage you to write it down, all right? But difference of squares will always factor in this pattern. So I'm thinking, what is the square root of m squared? What is the square root of 16? And then your signs are always positive, negative. The reason being, you want that middle term to drop out. And that middle term is positive for m and negative for m. That will drop out. And we still have our m squared minus 16. Again, when we're solving quadratic equations, we want to make sure our equation equals 0. At this point, we have our factored expression. I can set each equal to 0 and solve. Most of you probably can do this in your head. You're gonna find that x equals negative four for one, and x equals positive four for the other. All right. We'll continue right along. These last two examples, slightly more complicated, but again, uh, just going through that same process of factoring. When I want to solve a quadratic equation, my equation has to equal zero. So the first step in this problem is gonna to be to get everything over to one side, okay? So at this point, we have everything over to one side, our equation equals zero. We can look to factor. I notice my, ex or my equation is three terms. Uh, there's nothing common between those three terms, okay? So then what I need to do is go through that uh, grouping process we talked about with the factoring worksheet. So I'm thinking about one times 100 is 100. And I'm thinking of factors of 100 that give me negative 20. Well, how about negative 10 and negative 10? So what I did is I broke that up into uh, negative 10 and negative 10. And then I'm going to create that grouping process where I can take out what's common. My first group is S, and I have S minus 10. In my second group, I'm going to take out negative 10, and I have S minus 10. And if you notice, those grouping pieces are the exact same. We have S minus 10 times S minus 10. So at this point, when we go to solve, we set each term equal or each factor rather equal to zero uh, when i add 10 i'm going to get s equals 10 and then over here i'm also going to get s equals 10. okay to kind of give a visual of heads up as far as things go this is going to be a situation where your parabola just touches and actually come on there we go because keep in mind i mentioned before our solutions to our quadratic equation are where our graph or coincide with our x-intercepts. So we could potentially have two solutions. In this case, we have one solution. So this is going to be a parabola that touches at 10. Okay. Finishing up on our last problem. All right. 
um, looking at this, there's nothing common between those three terms, but I would encourage you to always factor um, with a positive A value. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take out a negative one from everything. So I have a negative one, 12 X squared, minus eight X minus 15 equals zero. So I'm taking out a negative one. When you have that positive A value, it's gonna make your factoring slightly more efficient. So I have a product of negative 180. I'm thinking about how I can break up this negative eight into um, factors of 180. So I'm thinking 1, 180, 2, 90, 3, 60, 4, 45, 536, 6 times 39 times 20, or 10 and 18. 10 and 18. Oh my gosh. 10 and 18 do work. So I'm going to do negative 18 plus 10x. Notice those add up to negative 8. And when I multiply them together, I do get negative 80. <laughs> then just like before, we have four terms. So we're going to group. I'm going to use brackets now. In this first group, I can take out a 6x. I'm left with 2x minus 3. In this next group, I can take out a 5, and I'm left with 2x minus 3, which means at this point, we have our negative 1 out front. We have one factor of 2x minus 3. My other factor is 6x plus 5. And then you can solve each of these. Since there's no variable associated with the one or negative one out front, I can just leave that. But I want to set my factors with variables equal to zero and solve, which means x equals three halves. Or again, I have an intercept at three halves. I also have an x intercept at negative five, six. Those are my two solutions to my quadratic equation. Um, and those are my two intercepts when I graph my parabola. And we'll get into graphing tomorrow. Uh, keep in mind, as you work through your assignment, you guys, there's going to be some problems that say simply factor, which means you would stop at this stage here, okay? Or stop at this stage here. There's going to be other times where you have the equation and you actually want to solve, which means you need to go that extra step and you know actually go out and solve each of those factors set them equal to zero and solve and get to that green final step so homework's on the bottom of the page uh, feel free to let me know if you have any questions the answer key is available on schoology you can use the discussion board you can chime into our live feed um other than that you should be watching the video which hopefully you are right now uh taking notes doing the homework assignment check your assignment please before you submit Again, homework grades are a combination of uh, effort and accuracy, so make sure your assignment is completed with the correct answer and work associated with it. Um, and I'll grade those and we'll get going on quarter two. Best of luck. Let me know if you have any questions.